And we would at this time formally move for a mistrial uh, arising from the questions, uh, the manner of questioning, and the information elicited during cross-examination of Ms. Wernitz. As Your Honor heard, on a number of occasions, she was asked about matters that, and, and as Your Honor recalls, we tried to address this issue before she testified so that we wouldn't even get into this area. You heard persistent questions asked about other offenses, forcing the defense to instruct Ms. Warnes not to answer those questions, forcing the court to sustain uh, objections in that regard time and again. Um, to make a long story short, Judge, we tried to take it up ahead of time, maybe once, maybe twice, maybe five times, but when you get into the extensive number heard in this case and the extensive manner and suggestion that was elicited during the cross-examination, we think that it would be incredible for, it, it would be incredibly difficult for a jury at this juncture to properly consider Ms. Warnes' testimony and for properly assess the material issues in this case. I think the jury has been substantially tainted in a fair trial as envisioned by both the Florida and federal constitutions cannot be had given that cross-examination and given the manner of it. As I said, you, know, you ask it once, twice, you ask it five times, but once, once it's clear what's happening, there comes a point where an attorney needs to stop. Uh, and throughout her cross-examination, that area was brought up and many proper questions were brought up. Motion for Mitch, nine, ready for the Sorry, who's trying to bring them back to your seat? Uh, your Honor, uh, there were, I, I don't want to offer uh, legal argument on uh, on examining all the other homicides. I, I want to uh, advise the court that uh, my subsequent questions about other matters, each time was provoked by an answer that the defendant gave. I understand what that happened too, but about what I said is good. Yes, or and I'll say now for the record, is that as uh, we're going on the tape, it was shown from our yes, question on the tape. Yes, sir. Uh, the other uh, matter, Your Honor, you know, I wanted to bring it up before, you know, outside the presence of jury, didn't want to interrupt cross examination. Uh, we're going to proffer to uh, Ms. Warnos uh, her letter to Ty Moore, where she talks about the movie offers and the money. And uh, that's a legal matter that I think you should consider outside the presence of money. I haven't heard anything about it until right now. What is this letter? <laughs> Your Honor, this year, Your Honor, for, for the record, we were going to announce we have no further questions of Ms. Warnes at this juncture. We had not concluded cross examination. We had legal argument on several matters. This was one of them. That we observe those. I, John, I understood cross. I mean, the record will speak for itself, but I understood cross examination to be complete. Subject to a record request for a break, and I did. Yeah, and subject to that. Subject to our legal argument. I, I had I hadn't finished cross examination. Judge, we have several letters which she referred to them as we began to ask her. You know, she has tried to say Tyree Moore is now motivated by trying to make a lot of money out of her by the way she testifies. And we have a letter uh, from Ms. Warnos to Tyria Moore telling Tyria that she wants Tyria to make money from movies and books from her life. And that she, in fact, suggested that to Tyria Moore. It might be a good rebuttal. Some teachers have. I... Judge, we John, I'm sorry. Well, I, I, like I said, I didn't want to do that in front of the jury. I said we had a legal argument, a couple things we wanted to present. I'd at least like to have her identify the letter and say, yes, that's my letter. Two things, Judge. If we could have the record read back, I, my recollection is the state terminated its questioning, and that's what the three of us discussed over the... It's back as a call to me. I don't know. But I'm saying that's what I think the record will reflect, Your Honor. Secondly, and... and well, also importantly, is the fact that those letters are not material to any of the issues before the court. They don't relate to any material issues before the court. They may, Ms. Jenkins asked about nothing that would touch on those types of things on direct examination. As Your Honor knows, we had a number of problems with the cross-examination, uh, given the context of the questioning, and to then ask that a, the person accused be recalled to ask about something that is not a material issue as to the issues before the court in this case would be improper and unnecessary. We're, we're, we're going, we had finished. Your Honor, I would ask that the court reporter read back the uh, 
Uh, exchange, right. exchange, just before the break. No, you're not. You got a knife in the I, I know. I, I know how risky that is. <laughs> Judge, regardless. I'm reluctant. Judge, Judge, momentarily, regardless of oh, let it, let it. Is regardless of, of, of word climbing, because I made it very clear throughout, and they kept objecting that areas were blocked, that I would like to have some legal argument and a chance to, to address the court of those issues. I so, said that was reserved for the legal argument. Now we'll see whether yeah. everybody can your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> No further questions, Your Honor. And then there was a request for a break. But Your Honor, that was not meant to terminate cross-examination. I can only observe your doubt what those questions were. I have no further questions. Well, we can address that in some other time. Yes, sir. Uh, may I uh, respectfully advise, Your Honor, that I had believed I had very well preserved the right to to your argument is what I... Yes, sir, which I had hoped would result in the court allowing us to reach these, I thought, were also sensitive areas. I didn't want to broach them without an outside presence jury conference. If I were working with some of these times through the course of the trial, I don't think I was in the game. <laughs> like to argue. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Are we ready for the jury? Um, yes, sir. That's fair to both sides. But that, that's true. Judge, I have no question, no question about your fairness. And no. I have to admit, I don't know what you agree with you, but I know you're fair. And I'm all in there, but never in doubt. <laughs> 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 judge says, whoa. Ms. Trout Yes, Judge. <laughs> um, we, we, we will announce that we have no further questions when the jury comes in. Would Your Honor like to take up that other matter now, just to the jury part, and we'll do that again? Uh, you need it now. Just a minute, bud. <coughs> right there, Judge. Reach one. All right, we have that. Oh, hold up. <coughs> Do you want to bring this up now? We could, whatever, whatever. Oh, you want to do the jury stuff? You think it's the time. I put it up here so we don't forget it. I think we need What's to end it? questioning first. What is it? It's the Jackie Day decision, John. That's all I have here. No one needs to make moves and raise Jackie Day. Why don't we do that, Your Honor? Let, let's just do it now. We we had a, a, a bench conference with the court that was not recorded with regard to this issue where the party said gave the court an outline of their positions uh, with regard to Ms. Davis. The defense would like to call Ms. Davis as a witness in the case. Uh, the subject matter of Ms. Davis's questioning, as we discussed at the bench earlier, will relate to, as Your Honor recalls, when I tried to ask questions of Detective Porzeppa along those lines, Your Honor sustained the objections regarding Mr. Mallory's background and things along that nature. We discussed them at the bench, uh, not to belabor the point, because uh, Your Honor has suggested the, what the court's perception is. We would simply cite for the record Smith versus uh, State versus Smith, 573 Southern Second 306, suggest to the court that that area of questioning is appropriate. Um, I mean, yeah, and uh, State versus Smith, 573 Southern Second. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Judge, I thought you said the site. Keep arguing, and I'll be looking at this. I was just going to give Your Honor a copy of the tape um, and just ask that that be more. Copy what they've got. Ms. Davis. What are you going
Sworn take statement of a witness two years ago, we would object as, as that being the defense proper. If counsel got a proper, let us have one to the record so the court had has something to rule on. The tape of his arm. The tape is a statement made by Ms. Davis to Detective Brzezel. Without counsel and unsworn. Without counsel and unsworn. I don't need to listen to it. I will the way I earlier ruled. Can we make it? Can we just mark it and make part of the record? Sure. Thanks, Judge. At that time, Ms. Davis indicated that any knowledge he had of Richard Mallard was primarily for a year and a half, that he was a sweet, decent, and caring man, and they had a relationship that led her to believe nothing other than that. Uh, there were questions asked about matters of his background, which she knew from no more than a hearsay, and she was very um, confused about the nature and circumstances of those, other than the fact that nothing that she knew was admissible uh, as far as anything in his background. Uh, she had no personal knowledge of any criminal history, no personal knowledge of any propensity uh, towards violence, no personal knowledge of, of his reputation for truth and veracity. And the witness indicated that because of some difficulties she had had, uh, because of a, an injury some four years ago, that she could not remember the statements that she made primarily in her statement to Detective Orzeva. And in fact, indicated that many of the statements made in there were in error based upon her memory today. So we would submit to the court that there was nothing that Jacqueline Davis could have offered that would have been uh, allowed under the evidence code. Um, there was nothing uh, with regard to a reputation for violence. And I would submit to the court uh, that uh, alleged prior bad act, which Ms. Davis indicated she did not have any personal knowledge of any such bad act or criminal history of, of Mr. Uh, Mallory, uh, would have only served to confuse the jury and would have been inadmissible. They would have been in the form of pregnant question for the court that I can believe uh, sustaining the state's objection to uh, uh, those types of inquiries by defense counsel, as the court did uh, when Detective Orzeff was being asked for the third party uh, answer by, by the witness. Now, Judge, you, in terms of what Mr. said, you got yeah, not no, uh, Just for the record, uh, sure. uh, both uh, Ms. Jenkins and Mr. Miller were present during the course of, of the uh, taking stage. Ms. Jenkins asked all the questions with the exception. I think it was one follow-up question by Mr. Miller, and it was left to the defense counsel to decide whether or not they wish to take a sworn deposition of Ms. Davis or not. They opted to take a, an unsworn, informal statement of her. That lasts approximately an hour and 15 minutes in my presence. A couple of things, Judge. As to the statement itself, that was by agreement of the parties at the request of Ms. Davis and Mr. Tanner, as I recall, and we'll talk you and Tricia talked about it. I can answer that if that was incomplete. <laughs> The statement by defense counsel, and I think it was Ms. Jenkins, was that she didn't care whether it was taken before a court reporter or taken informally, but she wanted to talk to Ms. Davis. She'd subpoenaed Ms. Davis. She could talk to him with, with or without my consent. And I, and I said, I don't care which way you do it. And I conveyed to Ms. Davis it'd probably be simpler to just sit down and talk 
with the defense team and tell her what tell them what she knew if they had anything they wanted they'd probably call her as a witness if she didn't have anything they wanted that probably be the end of it and with that mr devore uh, miss jenkins mr. and mr miller i remember her to escort her to a private office she could use uh, went with miss davis and i that was the last i heard of it until now a couple of other things, Your Honor, as to the hearsay. Not making any further problem. Well, there's a, we don't want the record left as it is right now, because as to the hearsay that Mr. DeMore mentioned, the hearsay comes from Mr. Mallory. These are things that Mr. Mallory told Ms. Davis. As to the specific things Ms. Davis said, I'll turn it over to Mr. Jenkins and Ms. Miller. And which is Jenkins and Mr. Miller, because they were there. Your Honor, my recollection of what Ms. Davis said is drastically different than what Mr. DeMore has represented to the court. What we found during this uh, period of time we were discussing uh, her relationship with Mr. Mallory, she informed me that uh, four years ago she had a head injury and that she no longer could remember anything. The statement that she gave to law enforcement, I would uh, advise the court, was in 1989, wherein she gave a detailed uh, statement to investigator Orzeppa. She also was able to remember dates. She could remember uh, Memorial Day a few years back when she wasn't able to go on vacation with Mr. Mallory. So her memory was very selective. And she did not say that she had no knowledge of Mr. Mallory's criminal record or any criminal involvement. Your Honor, you're going to subpoena the lady. She's here, Chuck. You want to across the hall. If you want to call her as a witness, bring her on. Let's get the camera rolling. <laughs> I, I thought we were debating, I think Mr. Ryan had ruled that she should not testify. No, I, 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 I have said from the very beginning that I don't know what her testimony is and I can't rule on it until here. I have said that for a week now. And so I don't know what you want to do. If you, if you want to take this now, I'll let that jury get out of there. If we're going to call another witness, let's move on to the next witness. And then we can come to her tonight. What we would need, Your Honor, would be a hearing if what we need to do is to call Ms. Davis and find out if under oath she will provide similar testimony to what she provided yesterday. Well, Get on your little phone there. And, call her. And, and then, Judge, sure. And then, but we should do that out of the presence of the jury. Because the I question. I told you two weeks ago I would do that. I okay. Have to bring it on. Okay, you want to do that? You're talking about making a record right. Well, let's bring it on. Let's do it. And here. I think she's right outside. Bring her in. No. Your Honor, may we uh, give a reserve objection since this is uh, out of the uh, hearing present? Can we reserve objection since it's proper? We reserved everything. Two weeks ago. Second, sir, we will reserve it again. Well, well, all I'm saying is rather than interrupt and, and have objections that might be easier if we let it flow, I just don't want to hear waiting to go. That is fair. Thank you, Ron. How are you, ma'am? This is a proffer. Yes, sir. Yes, Judge. As the judge just said, this is a proffer. It's testimony outside of the presence of the jury. Just, I guess the best way to phrase it for lay people is something for the court uh, to consider. <laughs> Could you may say I, One thing, ma'am, Your Honor, uh, also, uh, since we're not going to be objecting, uh, this lady has been subjected to a great deal in her involvement as minimal. She has to <clears throat> know and one time have a, a caring relationship with the murder victim. And she has since been subjected to, to a great deal of uh, the rigors of the legal system. And I, since we're not going to be objecting, I just ask the court to do what I know you do anyway. All right. Could you please state your full name for the record? Back on Davis. Do you recall speaking to a detective in reference to Mr. Mallory's disappearance in October of 1988? Yes. Uh, not October. Okay. When, when was it that you spoke to the detective? Uh, it was in December. December of 1988? I don't know the year, whatever the year was that he was... Uh, um, Do you recall whether that conversation was after Mr. Mallory had disappeared? Yes. You just don't recall the exact date of it? Well, it's in December of, of whatever the year was. Do you, how many detectives were present during that conversation? Do you recall? Two. 
And they recall that they had a tape recording device that they had been using? Yes. Do you recall the detectives asking you questions with regard to Mr. Mallory, his background, his history, things along that nature? Um, yes. At one point during the questioning, the detectives asked you questions, if you recall, regarding Mr. Mallory's history in the state of Maryland. Do you remember that? We discussed um, Mr. Mallory in Maryland, yes. Do you recall? Can you speak a little louder? I can't hear you. The wall between them. Okay. Do you remember what you told the detectives about Mr. Mallory, when, about what Mr. Mallory had told you about himself in the state of Maryland? Yes. Can, can you tell us what that is, what you remember telling them? Um, I told them that over a period of time, you know, odds and ends, that uh, Mr. Mallory had said when he was a young man, he had um, been charged with burglary for entering somebody's house. Do you recall telling the detectives that Mr. Mallory had been incarcerated for some time? That he had told you that. Obviously, you were not, you were not in Maryland, but that Mr. Mallory had told you that. Objection, Judge. I know we indicated we wouldn't, but I'll talk to the Go ahead. He told me he had been in a rehabilitative program. Do you recall what Mr. Mallory told you, what you told the detectives about the circumstances of the burglary? That he entered a lady's house, or he entered a house, and that there was a lady who had been washing her hair, and that he had walked um, behind her, and he'd put his hands out in front of her, that he hadn't touched her, and that she screamed, and that was that. Do you remember what part of the house Mr. Mallory said this was, the sense that it happened? When Mr. Mallory told you about a rehabilitation or, or, or experimental program, do you remember what he said that was about, why he had to go there? Just that it's, you know, a new program. We didn't really discuss any more than that. Did he tell you what the program was for, though? Was it for alcohol or just what he said it was for? He never said it was for anything special that I can remember. Just a new, a new rehabilitative program they were trying. Do you recall discussing with the detectives other instances involving some difficulty that Mr. Mar Mallory had had in Maryland with certain other women? Um, the only other program was a situation where he had um, had a uh, loving situation with a lady that had broken up. And what did he say about that? Who, who was that person? A woman. Do you recall talking to the detectives about it was an ambassador's wife or something? Uh, of course, I don't know. If any I mean, of this just, is true. We're just no. talking about okay. what he told you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He had said it was, uh, I don't know if it, I don't even remember at this moment, it was an ambassador, it was somebody, yeah, I don't know the word I used this moment, but it was somebody in that kind of a capacity. And that they were divorced, I believe. Do you recall telling the detectives that Mr. Merrill, Mallory had indicated to you that he thought he saw this woman in Tampa, in the state of Florida, at one point? Yes. And where was it that he thought he had, that he told you he thought he had seen her? He said he thought he had seen her in a uh, dancing, in a uh, bar. Do you recall him telling the detectives what kind of bar it was that he was in? He said he thought it was in a, uh, like a topless bar or something like that. Do you recall talking to the detectives about what Mr. Mallory had told you about his frequenting topless bars or, or mood bars? Well, he had he said he did go to you know, nude bars. Do you remember him telling you why he did that? Well, 
the reason that he gave me for why he went was because he had insomnia and you know that was something that would be available that he might you know he did do you recall telling the detectives about mr mallory being paranoid yes and do you recall telling the detectives about Mr. Mallory being paranoid in reference to this woman from, I guess, the Washington, Maryland area, the diplomat's wife? Or... No, I don't believe that was... Do you recall talking to the detectives about plastic surgery that Mr. Mallory said he, he either wanted to have or had had? I don't remember which one it was. He said he would like to have plastic surgery, yes. And why did he tell you he wanted to have plastic surgery? Because he would like to have it, to have his nose fixed and to have the top of his ear fixed. And do you recall what you told the detectives um, about why Mr. Mallory told you he wanted to have that? Why he wanted to have his nose and ear fixed? Because he felt like he was um, marked that, that he had the, a nose disfiguration. Do you recall talking to the detectives about Mr. Mallory being uh, apprehensive that people were following him and being paranoid about that? Uh, yes. And do you recall talking to the detectives about Mr. Mallory's feelings of apprehension in reference to these women from up north, or the situation he had been with up north? No. Okay. Do you recall talking to the detectives about what Mr. Mallory told you about a roommate he had up north? No. Do you recall talking to the detectives about what you perceive as two personalities that Mr. Mallory had? Yes. And do you recall what you told the detectives about the two personalities? That he had one personality that was um, very easygoing, sweet, generous, always um, pleasant. And then he had another personality where he um, withdrew into himself. Do you recall telling the detectives that when, we'll call it the second personality, when he withdrew into himself, that he would become difficult to deal with? I uh, made an assumption of when that might happen. And do you recall telling the detectives that when he would be in the second personality, he would be quite paranoid? I don't um, feel that quite paranoid is a proper... Okay, what, do you remember what you told the detectives about that, about the second personality? Well, that he was just, a, a, you know, that was doing to himself and uh, um, he was a different kind of person. Other than withdrawing into himself, what else did you tell the detectives about the second personality, if you recall? No. You don't recall? Um, you know, I don't recall. Do you recall telling the detective that Mr. Mallory had been incarcerated for 10 years, that he had told you that? I don't, I don't understand the word incarcerated, because if that in means- In jail or prison. Okay, no, I don't remember him telling me he'd been in jail. He told me he'd been in a rehabilitative program. Okay, do you recall telling him something about 10 years? Yes. And what was that in reference to? The fact that he had been in this therapy program for 10 years. Okay, so he was in the therapy program for 10 well, years. Well, rehabil rehabilitative means therapy, I don't know. Do you recall him telling you how old he was when he first went into the rehabilitative maintenance program? In his late teens, I mean. And do you recall whether he told you if this was as a result of or after the burglary situation with the woman? It was because of. It was because of that? Did Mr. Mallory ever tell you whether he went to court on that case and what happened in court? Just that he went to court on it. 
Did he ever tell you what the woman said that he did? Or what he believed the woman said he did? Found just that she screamed. Did he ever tell you why she screamed? I would imagine because she was, he was there. Do you recall talking to the detectives about Mr. Mallory being obsessed with washing himself? No. Or cleaning himself? No. Do you recall telling them something to the effect that he he was a person who, who bathed often, wanted to bathe himself often? You mean every day after work? Yeah. Yes, he bathed every day after work. Do you recall what you told the detectives about what <coughs> Mallory told you about that, why he was doing that? Well, the same reason I guess anybody else would bathe every day after work. I don't know that he bathed every single day after work. I mean. Do you recall telling Detective Perzeva that Mr. Mallory believed he was being followed? He um, sometimes felt like he was being followed, yes. And do you recall why Mr. Mallory, what you told the detectives as to why Mr. Mallory believed that? No. Do you remember, putting aside the detectives for a moment, do you remember what Mr. Mallory may have told you about that? About no, no other than just the fact that he felt like he was being followed. Do you recall telling the detectives that he had a very strict habit of going home from work and showering, washing his hair, and changing his clothes because he felt that he was a person that had a body odor situation, and after working all day, he said he couldn't go out without showering, so he, you know, I would be extremely surprised if he would go out in jeans. Do you remember saying that to the detectives? I think that's an exaggeration of a person's daily routine. Okay, but you said that to the detectives, right? Um, those are probably my words, yes. Do you recall talking to the detectives about Mr. Mallory's VCR tapes, magazines, things along that nature? In regard to the fact that he had VCRs, yes. Yeah. yeah, and magazines? No. Do you recall? Talking to the detectives about what types of tapes Mr. Mallory had. He had all kinds of tapes. Do you recall telling Detective Frazeppa about certain pornographic tapes that Mr. Mallory had? Certain pornographic tapes? Yeah, he asked you and you said you, you were aware of that. Do you remember that? Where he had pornographic tapes? Yeah. Yes. And magazines too, right? No. Remember the, you don't remember that one. Okay. Do you recall talking to Detective Porzeppa about Mr. Mallory's losing his security clearance? Yes. Do you remember what the reason was that you gave the detective as to why Mr. Mallory lost his security clearance? No. Do you recall talking to this Detective Frazeppa about Mr. Mallory's drinking and how you were concerned about that? We discussed his drinking. Do you recall telling the detective that Mr. Mallory's personality, the two personalities we spoke about, would change when he would be drinking? No. Do you remember talking to the detectives about Mr. Mallory's uh, smoking marijuana? Yes. And do you recall what you told the detectives about Mr. Mallory's personality when he smoked marijuana? That I sometimes wondered if he smoked marijuana and made his personality change. <clears throat> do you recall telling Detective Herzepa that uh, I think the question he asked was, how about his drinking? Didn't he drink? And you said, yeah, most of the time. Do you recall that? No, I don't recall saying that. Okay. 
Do you recall telling the detective that when Mr. Ma when you knew that Mr. Mallory had been drinking and smoking at the same time, he he would be even he would be difficult to deal with. No. about whether Mr. Mallory had male friends? I think they asked your question. Well. Uh, well, you know, I mean, you mean like whether he had yeah, friendship? Do you, yeah, do you recall telling me that he, Mr. Mallory did not have male friends? Yes. told Detective Frazeppa about whether Mr. Mallory believed he was physically able to handle himself from things that Mr. Mallory had told you? I don't recall. Do, do you recall telling the detective he, was, he believed he was physically able to handle himself if anybody ever, you know, tried to touch him, he would just go for the throat, you know, with his hands and all this stuff? I don't recall. Don't remember that. Have a long yes, sir. Do you recall speaking to some of the attorneys, yes, some prosecutors and defense attorneys in this case yesterday? Yes. You, did you tell them anything about a reason why you may not remember all the things you talked to Detective Prozepo about? Yes. Do, do you recall what you told him? I told him it was because of the fact that I had uh, an accident a few years ago, and that because of it, I have um, some uh, scar tissue, and that I have um, sometimes there's memories that I don't have. When you were talking to Detective Prozepa, you, you recall some of that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Were you trying to be truthful with him? Yes. And when you were talking to the detective, were you trying to, as honestly as you could, answer all of his questions with yes. regard to what he was asking about? Mm -hmm. I have nothing further to you commit any type of crime or offense or do anything illegal? I never saw him so much as get a speeding ticket when I was with him. Nothing? Nothing. He was just a gentle, laid-back man, wasn't he? Yes. And you shared a relationship? Yes. For a period of time? Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Your Honor, we, with the proffer, we would, I, I guess, ask Your Honor again to consider, uh, you pre reconsider your call the lady as a witness. Only if we could discuss the subject matter, Your Honor. Well, what subject matter are you going to discuss? I, I, I don't know what you want to tell the jury. The, We've been making a lot of discovery here, but what is it you want to use with that? Whatever? The background information related to Mr. Mallory, to the prior uh, incarceration record, to the maintenance program that the witness discussed. Um, to his smoking marijuana, to his new bars. Um, that type of need is operation. I don't know. What, Your Honor, or maybe we. I don't know. Well, is, is, is the recommendation 
As, as, as your Honor recalls, Ms. Warren has testified that Mr. Mallory had made certain statements to her um, during their interaction. Yeah, yeah. I just like to address, and I think Mr. Nolwitz has given you the appropriate case. The case says that if this witness could provide perhaps some reputation evidence as to the violence of this individual, or if she could provide testimony that Ms. Warnos knew of prior acts of violence by this individual, it might perhaps be admissible, assuming this witness could even remember that. But certainly none of that has been proffered. As a matter of fact, the defense didn't even bother to ask the question. Uh, so under the law that they themselves have provided you, there's no basis for introducing this testimony. Well, I'm just going to let them have the best hope to go with it. Dear Lady Secret, please. Fine with me. We're ready to bring in the jury now. Your Honor, before the jury uh, comes in, we'd like to make an oral motion in limine that he uh, not ask Ms. Davis about any prior alleged uh, rehabilitation program. She has no personal knowledge of that. We're dealing with uh, a deceased individual who, who, who can't defend himself or can't offer anything. They're attempting to smear his reputation. There's no evidence whatever the defendant had any knowledge of any such uh, reputation. That is get that whole you do too. We're bringing it directly. Your Honor, can we, can we take a few minutes to confer? I don't think we need it, sir. We may we may proceed. We heard this jury around for one hour or five minutes. Your Honor, when the jury went out, our client was in the uh, booth. Yeah, we need to. Can we replace her? Okay. You stand down and have a seat back when we hear him. I said, you'll be Your Honor, at this time, the defense has no further questions of Ms. Warnes. Ms. Warnes, you may stand down. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Fumel, indulgence for a moment. Yes. Your Honor, at this time, the defense would rest. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I need to confer with counsel. Uh, and then I'm going to give you the option to have a problem.